Welcome to the first video of our One Dimensional Collision Trilogy Masterpiece. Well, Masterpiece, we'll have to wait and see. But we do have a one dimensional collision. That part was true. A five kilogram object is moving to the right with a speed of four meters per second and it smashes into a three kilogram object moving to the left with six meters per second. And the question is, what's going to happen? Well, no matter what type of collision it is, no matter what type, momentum is going to be conserved. Which means that the total momentum before is equal to the total momentum afterwards. Prime, as you know, means after. So shoving numbers in here, I can see that the mass is 5 and the velocity is 4. And I'm going to add that to 3 times 6. But if I've called 4, 4, then that means I'm assuming that to the right is positive. So I've got to call this guy's velocity negative 6. And that's going to be equal to 5 v1 prime plus 6, nope, plus 3 v2 prime. Okay. So there's my momentum equation. I'm going to do that every single time. If I simplify it a little bit, I've got 20 minus 18. I get 2 is equal to 5 v1 prime plus 3 v2 prime. Now obviously I can't solve that. That's a single equation with two unknowns. It means, not inaccurately, that there's lots of results from this collision. I could smash these things together and no matter what momentum is going to be conserved, but they could collide a lot of ways. They could bounce off each other, they could stick to each other, they could crumble, they could smash, they could bounce off each other and explode with more energy than they had. All kinds of possibilities and that's where the types of collisions comes into it. So if the question said, and I am saying this is an elastic collision, if it is an elastic collision, then we know that the kinetic energy before is going to have to be equal to the kinetic energy afterwards, the total kinetic energy. Putting us all in the formulas, I can say that a half m1 v1 squared plus a half m2 v2 squared is going to be equal to a half m1 v1 prime squared plus a half m2 v2 prime squared. It's a hard equation to say, but it makes sense. It's simple. The kinetic energy before equals the total kinetic energy afterwards. Okay. If I simplify a few things in here, I end up with, I believe, 80 over 2 plus 108 over 2 is equal to 5 over 2 v1 prime squared plus 3 over 2 v2 prime squared. And I can cancel out those 2s, add them up and I end up with 188 is equal to 5 v1 prime squared plus 3 v2 prime squared. That's another equation with the same two unknowns that I had a moment ago. So I've got two equations, two unknowns, and everyone in grade 10 math knows how to solve that. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to solve the two equations, two unknowns. I'm going to start by rearranging this momentum equation for v2 prime. v2 prime is equal to 2 minus 5 v1 prime over 3. And I'm going to call that equation number 1. I'm going to call my energy equation here equation number 2. And I'm going to take equation number one and sub it into equation number two. I'm going to do that up here. Equation one into two. And what does that give me? It gives me 188 is equal to 5 v1 prime squared plus 3 open bracket 2 minus 5 v1 prime all squared over 3 squared. So one of those threes is going to cancel, right? I'm going to multiply everything by 3. 188 times 3 is 564, and that equals 15 v1 prime squared. And I'm going to expand this guy. That's uh, 4. I'm going to put a bracket around it. Plus 4 minus 20 v1 prime plus 25 v1 prime squared. And all of that, oh, I don't need to put a bracket around it. It's all over 3, but I've already moved my 3. No problem. So now I'm going to shove everything over to the left side of the equation. Simplify, I'm going to get negative 40 v1 prime squared plus 20 v1 prime. 560 minus 4 is 560 and that equals 0. And that's a quadratic formula, sure, but who cares? I grab my calculator, I put in A as negative 40. I hit B as 20. I hit C as 560. 
I had equals, and I get V1 prime is either negative 3.5 meters per second or positive 4.0. Of course there's two, two results because it's a quadratic equation, but one of them is probably junk. And which one is it? Is it the negative 3.5 or the positive 4? Negative 3.5 means it goes back, not quite as fast as it went before the collision. Okay, positive 4 means it still goes to the right. Well that's a little unlikely, right? They smash together and then the 5 kilogram object keeps going to the right. But it could happen if somehow they missed each other and they didn't touch at all. And if they didn't touch at all, it would be an elastic situation, not a collision, I guess, but it would be elastic. It would satisfy the math anyway. So I think we can see, I hope, that the positive 4 is garbage. But more importantly than it not being the right answer, it also tells me that I haven't done anything wrong, mathematically speaking. Because obviously, if they did miss each other, they would satisfy both my momentum co conservation and my conservation of, of uh, kinetic energy equations. So that's what's happening here. I I know that that's right, so now I don't need to think about it anymore on the test. I know I've done all my math right, I'm feeling good. I go ahead, I shove that guy into equation number one. Five times negative 3.5 all over three, and I get an answer of positive 6.5 meters per second. Just as a double check, if I put my positive 4 in it, I get 2 minus 20, which is negative 18 over 3, I get negative 6 if I use this answer. And that's obviously garbage, but hey, it's negative 6. It's the initial condition again. It's the given. It's where we started. So that all sounds really good. So therefore, I just make my little sentence here, and I'm just going to say the uh, velocity of the 5 kilogram afterwards is going to be 3.5 meters per second to the left. Negative is not really a direction. And the 3 kilogram object is going to end up going at 6.5 meters per second to the right. I think I'm done. <laughs>